Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Nameless RC N47 HD featuring 1103 8000kV motors. I have the HQ 65mm press on props. Come standard with these gem fans. For your FPV view as well as your HD recording we have the Caddx Baby Turtle. We have an F4 flight controller with a 12 amp ESC. Right inside this little hammer area is the Nameless RC Nano 400 VTX. Smart audio control from 25 milliwatts to 400 milliwatts. Also for the receiver I do have the Nameless RC FR Sky receiver. Comes with one of these kind of battery straps a foam piece for underneath your battery i use this ur uav battery pad it does come with an extra set of the gem fan props the caddx camera control board and some of that fancy tape to keep your motor wires down on the arms the single bottom carbon fiber plate looks to be two millimeters thick the arms look like they're six millimeters wide motor post to motor post it does look like 105 millimeters it weighs just about 53 grams i flew it on this gnb 453s battery which brings the weight up to almost 94 grams so while this day was really nice as far as the sun and the light light goes the backyard is not great but uh, we do have a little bit of a breeze I actually filmed my first flight I was gonna do another one of those first impression flights with this but I did such a poor job at setting things up that it just it came off wrong uh, to share with you a part that came off wrong was I typically set that stuff up with air mode on a switch that way I can take it out of air mode if I have a fail safe or something goes sideways but I didn't even do that and as I punched out over the house I went to zero throttle and the machine kind of waved through the air and I was like, oh, well, that's not good. It must be due to this design of having a taller canopy on it. Well, it turns out it had no props spinning. The props were just kind of spinning down, and so the wind was just kind of blowing it. It was kind of just tumbling. Anyways, there were several setup problems that uh, yours truly had. The gist of these new line of micros is weight matters. And if you add weight, your performance goes down. If you add quite a bit of weight, your performance really goes down. Now you can get pretty good footage out of these but it's going to be rather marginal sort of flying maybe marginal is not the right word slow steady consistent maybe that's the best word for it but to where you're not making a lot of moves you're not having a lot of throttle changes you're you're not moving the sticks very widely uh, very consistent yeah consistent is a decent word but I wanted to fly this in my typical style because I think if you come to this channel, you're looking for that sort of flight. And I, I've been called out a few times in that just fly it like you fly it. That's why we come here. Sometimes I'll show you a slower flight. And there are bits of this flight that are in that, no, I guess you would call it a smoother cruisy sort of style or consistent style. But because of the configuration of the yard and everything, that uh, doesn't come off great. But at least you'll get samples of what you could get. Uh, now, I did change out the props because I felt the gym fan props were increasing the vibration amount compared to my experience with the HQ props. I know the gym fan had a version out there that weren't very well balanced. So I think it was gym fan, maybe it was HQ. I'm sure some of you that are really well informed down there will, will update us all on whether I'm accurate on that, whether it was gym fan or HQ. But I switched out to the HQ props to see if I could improve the footage, and I think it did. But what else it did is it, it, it changed the tune, and I did retune to a degree, but it also, in the sharper turns with this extra weight, it, it gave us more of an oscillation. If you do, and you probably already saw it once when I go around that tree on the back side of the yard, that when you do kind of a hard 180 turn, even at, you know, a nominal speed, you get some of that shutter, that oscillation, that prop wash, you know, that, that sort of movement goes by a lot of different names in this hobby. Uh, even though the flight ends in a crash, we'd still get three minutes and I could have flown for about 25 more seconds as I look at the OSD and check the battery out. But I thought that was a reasonable flight and I had pretty decent light so that gives you an idea of what the footage is like. This is the look at the FPV view. I try to remind everybody because I do know that some new people do come to the channel. I don't do a great job of marketing the channel so uh, you kind of have to dig deep to find me here in my micro corner of the world. But what I want to draw your attention to is what happens here at the end. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the frame at the desk, but I wanted to show you this crash. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have audio to this. It was one of my retuning flights, and I will share that tune with these props as well. But I smacked that tree right there, and the camera freezes. And Now, when I saw that in the goggles, I thought, oh boy, I haven't even really flown this thing all that much, and I just broke it. But I power cycled it, and everything was fine. I've never seen that with one of these cameras. None of them. That Caddx, the run cams, I haven't seen that where the picture froze. The card didn't eject. The machine was still powered on. 
it was a really curious experience. So I thought I would share that for two points, the experience of the picture freezing and everything else being fine, as well as the, the frame taking a hit. Of course, I don't know exactly what part of the frame hit. So I just mentioned it and I wanted to go over it. Uh, Full Speed or Nameless RC, they sent me a new frame and I really like this carbon. Of course, you could take a look at the weave if you want to. And we've kind of talked about this in the past. This weave actually is kind of hard to pick up in the camera. Let me see if I can get an angle on it. I'm not a carbon fiber expert, so I don't try to act like I know something that I don't. But what I'm wondering, and some people have confirmed, but I can't say one way or another, I'm not in the carbon fiber business, is this weave that we look at, it's kind of like wallpaper. We really don't know what's underneath. But what I could tell you is, this has got to be one of the stiffer 2 millimeter carbon frames that I felt. So this this is pretty stiff. And, and like I was starting to say there, I have an advantage because I've got a nice flat piece. I can get all sorts of leverage against it. When I do it on the built up quad where I've got these points out here, it, it I have to put more pressure on it in order to make it flex. And I think Nameless RC should be sticking with this carbon. It's chamfered, it's smooth, it feels good. I do get a bit concerned about the narrowest back here, but it's really not that bad and that shouldn't be on a direct pressure point. We've got pretty good gaps around here. And if you're looking closely at the frame, you can see you do you can do a 16 by 16 stack. Let me turn the logo over. So, oh, it's this way. Question mark with the little crown on top. That's pretty interesting. They've changed their logo for this particular brand. Uh, so you can do the 16 by 16. You can do a normal whoop board. Uh, you can do the uh, downward mounted or vertically mounted USB port. Of course, you could go off the side as well. This is only going to run 65 millimeter props or two and a half inch props. I think I am going to build something on this, uh, mainly because I really like the carbon fiber. So that might be something that you want to take away from this video if you're looking for a two and a half inch in this class, that this seems to be a pretty good stiff frame. I know some people like uh, Patrick J. Clark Project Mockingbird, you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're out there looking for good stiff frames because of the racing style, and I appreciate that too. Um, and and just so you know, I'm comparing it to a much thicker. Let me show that real quick. Uh, it's actually I, maybe it's the other one that's thicker. This one's two millimeters too. This is the trash can frame, I think. Yeah, I think this is trash can. This is much flip. I mean, just much more flexible. I got another one over here. Oh, Kebab's toothpick. So this one. I don't know if you can see that. Those are the same thickness, just about. I think kebabs might be just be... They're either the same or really, really close to where I could get the calipers out and measure, but that's just more time. I actually think it rivals kebabs carbon. So maybe they got the same manufacturer or something. And if I compare it to other quads around here, I was just pretty impressed with the stiffness of this. That, it, 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 As I said, I'm kind of beating it up. I would build on this, but... Do note that it's 9x9 mounting pattern for your motors. You're not going to be able to get any of those three uh, three hold motors on here. As you can hear in the audio, this isn't the quietest setup around. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that they uh, used some of that magic tape and they did use a lock nut right here. That is key when it comes to these things. I've got another one over here that without that lock nut, this whole top canopy just kind of shifts around. And this one's pretty solid and that's probably why we get relatively good footage out of this form factor. And as I was talking about it, you know, these aren't going to be high performers. You're going to have to choose. You know, you're putting HD footage well above performance. In my opinion, I'm guessing that most people have a pretty large gap between performance and HD footage. HD footage is just so much more important than performance that you're willing to give up quite a bit because you are giving up quite a bit. I think also in this format, it's difficult because you're building up. So you've got your, you've got your battery down here and you've got the rest of your canopy up here, so you're getting more and more weight away from your prop line, which also decreases your agility or maybe that locked-in feel that we're always looking for in quads. So it's something to note. We are soft-mounted here, but I don't think that has much of an impact because you can see this was probably assembled with the motors plugged in and then everything pressed down because it looks like those wires are pretty much pressed into the carbon a little bit. So that soft-mounting, while it might be doing something, uh, it's not as much as if we had some clearance in there. Also, the USB port is not flush with the carbon. It's actually recessed, so you may find you need a longer USB cable in order to plug that in. Let me get one of my standard ones out here, and we'll see if we can make this work. Go to the hand that works. I'm not left-handed, if you're wondering. I'm right-handed. Nope, nothing. So this is a cable I use quite a bit. 
I knew that already. I'm just showing you because, well, I'm trying to make it entertaining, people. Come on. This one is that one uh, with the uh, uh, the Geeling UFO, 85 UFO X, I think it was, that had that really long USB cable. I left that one in the package, forever won that one. But uh, you would, somebody out there had pointed me to this one on the uh, Amazon, I think it was, on the Amazon. Same that, I'm saying that like my mother. But I thought this would be handy, and precisely it is, because as you can see, when I plug this in, of course... We're getting lights, we're getting activity, we've got a good connection. So it's something to consider with these. Of course, there's always changes and iterations to all these things. I have had this for a couple of weeks as I fight through the winter weather trying to break through. So uh, I have been flying it sporadically during that time. Oh, I did secure the battery lead down to the arm. That's something that manufacturers miss time and time again. I don't know why. It's probably because none of them really listen to me. But I think that's important because with a battery ejection, you damage your board. You, if you damage your board, you've damaged your board and your ESC. It's two things, not just one thing. Upside and downside, we get more smaller combo parts keeps our weight down, keeps our fun up, but it can hurt our wallets long term when we damage them. I would like to see motors with at least two screw holes that would give us the option to running some of the T-style props or the props that you have to mount on with screws or at least the option of using screws with the props if you chose to. Um, these are the same motors that Full Speed or Nameless RC has been using on the last couple iteration of products and uh, you know, they, they're, they're not top performers by any stretch. They seem to be kind of middle of the road. I kind of think they're a little bit noisy. I don't know if that's a bearing issue or what that is. Um, I think you can kind of hear the motor running rather than listening to the props when you fly. You may need to go back and listen to that audio that I've got uh, during the flight footage to kind of get your ear to that. The Caddx Baby Turtle came with uh, auto recording, so as soon as you power up the quad, if you've got a card in, it'll start uh, recording. So that's fine because that's the way I like to have things. Also note in the canopy, we've got some metal pieces. It's easiest to see this. I forget what these are called. You guys have enlightened me to this. These are two pieces that kind of screw down together, so it gives you a more secure or the probability is, I'm guessing, that it gives you a more secure connection to the canopy because it is pretty rigid. The canopy itself is fairly flexible. Watch right here. The canopy itself is fairly flexible, but this connection through the uh, the screw is pretty solid. As I grab it, try to move it around. I know I'm I'm shifting things in my hands, but that is really important in order to get as good a footage as you can out of this as far as stable, no jello footage. I do think the canopy in general needs to be a little bit thicker, but of course, when you increase thickness, you're gonna increase weight a little bit too. But I think if we just added some to this curve, kind of all the way around, and I don't know, I have never designed anything in 3D printing, so I'm telling tales out of school here. But if you could do a thicker layer between the screw mount, maybe just everything up to about here, about the top of my fingernail, I think that would stabilize this area more and give you even better footage. I don't think, unless we're hard mounted to like carbon, are we going to get rock stable footage out of anything this size. I see on the Full Speed RC website, this version with the FR Sky receiver in it does run $144.99. There's also a version you can get without the HD footage, which I have not flown, but I presume it flies with more performance and not HD footage. That one comes in a little bit over $100. looks like $110. Of course, Banggood is also selling this product at the same prices, or at least the price that I'm looking at for the HD version appears to be the same price. Uh, it does come in DSMX, FlySky, and Crossfire even for those long-range flyers out there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.